Hello and thank you for joining us today. The ESPC20 online team would like to welcome you to this session about SharePoint document libraries delivered by Melanie Culver. Hello everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the conference as much as I have up until now and I do hope that I can add some more to that with my session today. So today I'd like to talk to you about how you can improve the document management experience in Teams and SharePoint for yourself and for your colleagues to have more fun and using the whole system, not being frustrated, not being able to find the content you're looking for. A little bit about myself. Um, my name is Melanie Culver. I work as a consultant and solution architect for Microsoft 365 for an international organization based in Vienna. Uh, I have Austrian and British roots. Yeah, and I've been working with SharePoint since 2008. So a very long time and a couple of years back, of course, I completely moved to the cloud world. So very brief agenda. Um, first, I'd like to talk about why do we want to talk about this topic? So what are the pain points of document management? What actually happens behind the scenes to so just give you a basic understanding? And then what I think, how you can improve the way you work and collaborate with Teams at SharePoint. So what are the pain points when it comes to document management? I think the first thing is that we're absolutely overwhelmed with too much content. We have no clue where to find what. So at some point you just give up and probably ask some person, some, someone else to give you the content. It's really about finding the needle in the haystack. The best thing of course is if you put on uh, add metadata to all your content, but no one is really willing to do that because it's a lot of effort. And sometimes people just don't understand why they want to do it to then benefit afterwards. And another very important topic is, and this is also one of my babies I like to talk about, is records management. If you do document management, you want to actually have the full life cycle of a document. So also records management and be able to do records management. You also need to have a certain subset of metadata that helps you afterwards with that process. And of course, I think a lot of us are still struggling, maybe not moving the content to the cloud. So maybe you're still on your files, file system on shared drives or you have your custom document management system and when you want to move and migrate your content there. And maybe this is a good time to come up with a good concept of how you can do document management in Teams and SharePoint and make your life easier. So now I want to talk to, about a little bit what actually be, ha happens behind the scenes of Teams and SharePoint because that's, this is an important basis to understand why I'm going the direction I want to explain to you afterwards. So basically you have three components when we talk about Teams and SharePoint, and there's also OneDrive that comes into play. And very important to understand is when we talk about the actual team collaboration, meaning channels, all the documents you upload there are actually stored in SharePoint online. If you're in the one-to-one -one communication, the chats, you store your documents in OneDrive. And this is a concept sometimes people don't quite understand because it's a little confusing also on my end. Because let's say you're, chatting and you want to share a document with someone who's not in the chat, there is no option because the owner of the document is the person who uploaded it because it's in their OneDrive. In SharePoint, we're far more flexible in that sense. What's important to know is, so every team site, every team has a backing SharePoint site with a certain folder structure. So you have one standard document library called Sharp Documents, and beneath that, every channel will have its own folder or any document that is uploaded in that specific channel lands in that folder. So basically, you have this overlap of functionality between OneDrive Teams and Teams and SharePoint. So some things, if you set them here, have an impact on both worlds. And a very good example here is about how you share content in Teams and SharePoint. You have different dialogues, it's hard to understand, but I think the three main concepts how you can share a document is if the user already has access, you just send out the link and the person can access it. But if the person does not yet have access because it's not part of the team, you can still share that document by just saying share, type the name and what happens in the background, the user automatically gets access to the file in SharePoint, not in Teams. And the other last option is that you manually set the permissions in SharePoint, grab the link and then share it, which is a very conscious process but it's very technical in my, my point of view. 
And it, the reason why I'm telling you this is because there's a nice separation you can have. You can, if you set permissions in Teams, the people automatically have access to all the content in SharePoint. But if you set permissions in SharePoint, it does not necessarily mean that the people in Teams have access to that content. So this is where you can then start playing around with setting up permissions. A very, very important thing is to know that if you're a team owner, you will always have access to SharePoint content because you're a site collection admin. So you can't revoke permissions in SharePoint for a team owner. Yeah, and I think one very important part here is no one is willing to add metadata, but it helps so much. And this is also a pain point. I want to propose a solution to mitigate this problem that sometimes you really need metadata to be able to work with your content. So what could a possible solution be? So I think a very important aspect is to understand the process the, the business owner wants to have um, covered with Teams or SharePoint. So it's really about analyzing um, what they do on a daily basis, what are their pain points, what do they search for on a regular basis, how, you can, how can you make their life easier to find their content? So this is understanding the business side. And then after you understand the business side, you can then map this to the, you know, the new technology, how you can use Teams best, how can you use SharePoint best, either through just purely configuration, or if you want to go as far as actually developing some customizations to make your life easier, also possible. So, what are the possible components we can use to make our life easier when it comes to document management? Number one, of course, is adding metadata. If you have a common understanding of certain things, like every document you will have has a certain ID or a client or a project name whatsoever, why can't you just automatically set that metadata? There is an option in SharePoint. I can show you then how you can set this automated data without the user having to manually enter this. Very helpful. Also, something I've learned in the past is if you have common folder structures, let's say in each of your project initiatives, it makes life a lot easier for people to transition between different projects. Also, play around with permissions. Maybe it's not always necessary that everyone has access to everything because sometimes it really overwhelms people if they see too much. It's not about not willing to share the information, but it sometimes helps to reduce the flow of content. I guess a lot of you have already heard of this concept of hub sites. I really like it because it makes it easier to join content into one space. So I like to use a hub site to then join certain teams to then have a proper unified search, a common navigation. Next topic uh, is search. Use search wherever you can. I'm a really, really big fan of using search driven applications. So let's say you have uh, a client, a business with a process where they always try to search by a certain ID because they captured this metadata or a certain content type, etc. You can configure a nice search with manage properties to filter and slice and dice your content to be able to find it a lot easier. And of course, the last topic is how do you move the documents? And this is again about understanding the process, coming up with a nice information architecture, and then migrating your content. So it's a lot of effort maybe at first, but then it's really easy to map and migrate your content. So picking up all of these topics, the thing that my experience showed in the last year or so, which was really helpful, is this concept of having a hub site which equals a team. You can make any SharePoint site collection a hub site. So you need your tenant admin or SharePoint admin to mark a certain site as hub site. And then anyone who has the permissions can actually join this hub site. And the nice thing here is that you can then, as I said, have a unified search and they're coupled but decoupled. Also, you have then the possibility to have a common navigation on all of these sites in SharePoint and the hub site. So it's easy then for the users to jump between the different projects, for instance. So here, for instance, I have a scenario that I'm a, a media company and I have engagements with different newspapers every once in a while. So every newspaper has its own team 
And within this team, every project initiative I have, I have an old channel. This again is always the same concept for all the clients. So it makes it easier for all of my colleagues to then transition to the different projects if necessary. So I can do all of this either manually. So each and every time I create the site, I join the hub site, I create the channels, I create the folder structure as needed, or I have the option to do this in an automated way. This is already the more mature version. What I like to do is start manual, play around, configure the things you need manually for a couple of handful of projects are needed. And if you feel comfortable that the users are using it, then I think it makes sense to discuss and see how can we make this provisioning of these workspaces a lot easier and faster. I, of course, want to show you the full automation pipeline. So uh, what I've come up with is I have a process where people can request a new workspace, meaning a new team, which is a simple SharePoint form, which then just submits into a SharePoint list, and then that triggers an automated process. So in my scenario, I've used Logic Apps and Azure Functions, but there are many other options as well. And after this provisioning has taken place, you can email notify the owner or whoever requested the site, and then they can start collaborating. Which is important is when you provision the whole workspace, you have preset metadata. So I know which client, which project, um, maybe whatever you want, which technology, which media technology you want to use. You will have a common search and you will have a hub navigation where it's easier for all of your users to jump between those sites. So this happens in a very automated way and happens within minutes. And as I said, there are many different technologies you can use. I've picked uh, little logic apps and Azure functions, but of course you can do everything with Power Automate, Azure Automation, Azure Web Jobs. Um, you can use uh, designer workflows, but keep in mind they're being deprecated. I do still like using them because they're sometimes really handy and easier to provision in an automated way than a Power Automate. Yeah, it's just something to consider. And of course, you can have a look at the PMP provisioning engine, what I like to use. What is really, really helpful is the modern search from the PMP team. It's really about clicky clicky, and you have a nice user interface for people to search stuff. And also you can use the Graph API to provision things. For the Azure functions, because I start off creating scripts on my local machine with PowerShell, I use PowerShell scripts in Azure Functions to execute my automation. That's OK. Enough of the talking. Let us let me show you what I've implemented. So basically, what you see here is a SharePoint site where you have preset metadata. So every time you upload a new document, you'll have this metadata preset, which then again helps us when we try to create a search-driven application for people to be able to find their content a lot easier. And the users just don't have to think about it because it just happens in the background. So the nice thing here, what I'm using is the default values in SharePoint lists and document libraries. On every folder level, you can set default metadata. So what I do is when we create the channel, we automatically set default data for the project name, for instance. Here you'll see the search-driven application I was mentioning. So on the left-hand side, I've configured the filters. So I created the document type, so which is a content type, basically which client, which project name. So I can, on the left-hand side, just filter down here. I don't have to search. I mean, I still have the full text search, but just purely because I know it's BBC client and it's a sale document, I will find this document fairly easily here in the search. And also a nice thing, because we're in this hub scenario, I can provide a user interface where I see a unified view of all the client spaces we have. So it's again, just configuring search, the PMP modern search uh, web part to then only consume the SharePoint sites and render them as tiles. And then it's an le easy thing to jump to the SharePoint portals where needed. And this is again, very similar in Teams. I can just, pin these pages, the SharePoint pages within my team. So I have my team's hub site, and within that, I have pinned these two things, and I've created, uh, added this pin for requesting the workspace. And again, I can refine here. 
here you can see that we actually, when we create a new channel, we pre-provision a folder structure. So again, it's easy for users to transition between projects because we have a common approach for all our projects. It's not a must have, but I think it's very helpful because users are still very folder structure driven. I would recommend try to reducing the structure if possible, but it's okay if you want to keep it. And here again, as I said, I pinned the same thing here, quick jump for everyone to the SharePoint sites to collaborate. So let's actually have a look how this thing looks like. So here you see the team. I'm quickly going to show you the request form. So again, this is a SharePoint site I just pinned here. I'll nevertheless open this in SharePoint. So basically, I can choose between creating a new client workspace or a project. First, I have to create a workspace before I then create an actual initiative, a project, which creates a channel. So here, I selected the workspace. I give it a title, so I'll call it World News. I can set who the owner will be. So it will be me. Uh, I know there's a user called Alex in my tenant. And I click, and automatically my Logic app will start provisioning. So let's wait until that is done. In the meantime, I will show you um, how everything looks like. So as I said, I have my demo hub site here, which is a team, which I just made a hub site because my admin helped me there. And then I have a set of sub uh, other teams that are actually connected to that hub. And I can see this by clicking here on the client workspaces. And I see all of these SharePoint sites, which are basically all of these here. The other thing, as I mentioned, is the search page. So let's say I know there's a project, uh, a client called Daily Post, uh, Daily News, and I'm actually looking for a certain document. Oh, okay, it's a client document. And here you can see there's a project report or status plan, and then I can full text search. It could just refine it down to plan if I need to. So this is just happening purely because the Metadata is set automatically in the background. Um, so let's go into one of the teams. Um, so let's say daily news. I have a campaign from 2020. I see the files tab here. As you can see, I have a predefined folder structure. Project management folder. And now I'll just upload a sample document here. And as you can see, you automatically said, okay, this is a client document. It's the daily news and it's a marketing document. So this all happened in the background. So now let's have a look how this actually happened. So let's go to SharePoint because this is a SharePoint functionality I've been actually using here. So if we go into the library settings, and here I have this column default value settings. And here you see the folder structure. Basically, we have the campaign channel and we have the general channel. And here for the campaign, I see I have preset values for project name, implementation organization, because I thought that this could be helpful information and who the client is. I can do this down to this detailed folder level. I can change the values as needed. Um, and this happens automatically when we go through this provisioning process, this automated one. So we create the folders, we preset that metadata, and that's it. Um, so now going back to the SharePoint, uh, to this SharePoint site, you can see here I have this navigation up top. So I have demo hub site. I added the link to the internet and I added a link to workspaces. So this will always take me to the overview of all the web, web uh, workspaces I have access to. Uh, so I can then click to, I don't know, BBC, because I need to work here on this project. And again, I have the same navigation where I can then start working on the documents. So I think it's, this is really helpful for users to jump between the different client and project initiatives. You're absolutely flexible with the navigation. So an, a nice thing I haven't told you yet, and as I've explained to you, 
This is why I was so picky on trying to explain to you the permission model. Here you can see you have access to a lot of the teams. If I now go into a different profile, um, which is Alex, you see he only has access to a subset of these teams. But I, if I, let's refresh this page, he has this hub site as well. He has this client workspaces. And if you look carefully, for instance, New York Times, he doesn't see here, but my user, for instance, sees this here. But he still sees this because he has access through SharePoint on this page. So this is a nice thing. There's a nice concept I came up with to say, I don't want to overburden all the users to have access to all the teams, but it's important for us that everyone have, has access to the actual documents. So we have a separation of these permission model. We set permissions in teams, and we have an Active Directory group that says, all these users have access to all of these SharePoint sites only. And if necessary, he can then request access to the actual owner of the client to also be able to collaborate within Teams. But purely for accessing documents, this is, I think, a great solution. So here you can see the document search, and it can filter down for the different clients. So New York Times, I see all these status reports, crown documents, et cetera. Um, so here you see actually that the world news has already been provisioned. I have this general channel. Because I added Alex as a member, he has access already. And we've pre-provisioned this here as well. So let's also request a project space, for instance. So let's go back to our hub site. And now I want to create a project space for the world news. So I go here, new project. This is not the best user interface. There are probably better ways, but for this, this purpose, I think it's sufficient. So let's say it's a campaign 2021. Um, this is the marketing who's going to implement this project. Again, you can have a number of default um, fields here. This is helpful because then we, this information we will set as default values in the SharePoint document library in that specific channel. So now again, what will trigger is the Logic app that will then provision this project space here. So this is how it looks in the user interface. You can configure all of this more or less manually, but let's have a look how you can actually automate this thing. So what I've decided to do is actually use a Logic app for this. Um, like the Power Automate, it's just, it's just nicer from a technical point of view to maintain it because you can have it in source control, provision it, etc. So basically, this is attached to the, the SharePoint list where you can request a new workspace. So once a new item is created in the SharePoint list, the Logic App triggers and then decides, are we going to create a client workspace or a project space? If it's a client workspace, We'll just call an Azure function, we'll pass the response, and then update the information, which is mainly the SharePoint workspace ID and the team ID. We'll have a look at the actual Azure function in a minute. Similar approach for the project space, but what I try to do is try to use the standard activities we have in Power Automate. So we're able to create a new channel. We're not able to create a new team yet, um, maybe we can do it over the Graph API, but I opted out of that for now. I tried to go here, like I said, create a channel, create folders in the SharePoint list, and then at some point I thought, okay, let's move over also to uh, Azure Function. So these Azure Functions are in here. Um, there are two, no, there are actually three functions. The first one is that provisions the actual workspace, meaning the team. Looking at the code briefly, you, you also have the code available on GitHub if you like. Again, this is just not production ready. It's just about giving you an understanding how you could implement it. And also some hard coded values. So in the logic app, we pass some parameters, client name, who's going to be the owner, who are going to be the members. We get a couple of variables we need. 
and then we open a connection to Teams and SharePoint Online. First, we'll check, does this team already exist or not? If yes, we'll throw an exception. If no, we use the PowerShell command let to create a new team. That will take some time. We'll then add the users as needed, the owners and the members as the user provided. And then I had to add a sleep um, because it takes some time for SharePoint to provision. I assume 10 seconds has been safe for now. As you can also add some uh, polling to ask if the SharePoint site has already been cre uh, created or not, but for the purpose of this, this was sufficient. Since once we've done that, we'll grab actually a PMP provisioning schema template, which we've stored in SharePoint. We take that XML and we provision the whole template. So which means it will set content types, it will set fields, Etc. Here you see the code um, where we set default values uh, for SharePoint list. And this is where I mentioned to differentiate between users having access to Teams and SharePoint. So what I do here is I grant a certain AD group read access to the SharePoint site by default. Same as for specific folders. So not everyone may be allowed to actually read something within the internal documents folder. And once all of this is done, I actually join the SharePoint site through the hub site. So we have a nice benefit of unified search and the common navigation. And then we just return the values. Similar things happens to the project space. Um, this is a lot slimmer because we already create the channel within the logic app, but then it was not easy to find a way to set default values uh, for our folders. So this is where I then opted for the PowerShell script. And again, we just set the permissions on certain folders, and that's basically it for provisioning of this channel, basically. One thing I also implemented at a later stage is, what you could also do is, purely because someone joins a hub site, you could say, we have a process that crawls our hub sites once a day, and then they actually forcefully apply your schema as needed. So you have your PMP template, you forcefully apply this, and purely through a search query, you can get all the joined hub sites, uh, all the sites joined to that hub. And then I just came up with an example that we automatically grant read access to everyone. But as again, you can force a schema if you need it or not. This is basically a very brief overview of how you can automate certain things to make your life easier. Um, now let's move back to the slide deck um, to finalize things. So a short recap, I showed you how you can have a custom workflow to provision your workspaces and projects, to preset metadata, to pre-provision folders, to set permissions, to have a standard approach for things. And for this, I will use the logic apps again. It's just an example, you can use any other technology, same as the Azure function for provisioning and the Azure function for enforcing any policies you want to have if people join a certain hub site. An important thing I stumbled across on my team did is the topic of authentication and authorization. How do you grant your PowerShell script, for instance, access to Teams and SharePoint? There are four different ways. Uh, you can have an AAD app, which you grant access to the Graph API, which is okay, but you'll grant the app more permissions than absolutely necessary, where the CISO won't probably be happy about. I think Microsoft was working on a concept of giving more granular permissions, but that becomes tricky if you provision a team and then need access to that team. Similar applies to Office CLI. We couldn't find a way without granting admin permissions to everything was not a happy option. The example I showed you was based on a service account, which assumes that the service account has access to all the teams. So you consciously have to grant that service account uh, owner permissions to the team. With that, you have access to SharePoint and team and can automate your scripts. You could also use a SharePoint app, but that would only focus, of course, on the SharePoint stuff. All of them have their pros and cons. You just have to find the, pro the best solution for yourself. Just a few final quick wins I want to give with uh, pass on to you that will help 
help you hopefully improve your document management experience. It's not about implementing everything I showed you, but there are small quick wins like understand the business case. Maybe the simplest thing is just create a search that helps users based on certain metadata to find things, preset search field for a uh, document ID or client name because you already captured this in metadata. Absolutely fine, minimum effort, but could be a big benefit. Also, fairly easy, just set default metadata for your document library. If you only have four or five teams, fairly probably easy to implement from the beginning. Use your tabs you have in Teams. I think it's very helpful for people to jump between things. You don't have to store favorites anymore. I personally don't. I just try to pin everything as much as I can where it makes sense, of course. Don't overwhelm your users with too many teams. I'm already myself overwhelmed because I'm a member of too many teams. I try to hide them, which are not active for me. And if I'm an owner of a team, and I know I've closed that initiative, archive the team, get rid of the cluttering teams just to make yourself more productive. A nice thing I also like is the possibility of forwarding emails with attachments to teams because then you store knowledge for everyone, new members joining and not in your inbox. And as I showed you with the hub site, I like to see the single point of entry uh, for user if they want to start working on their project, create a hub site, create the overview dashboard with all the workspaces you have. Also very helpful for the users is if you standardize your channels and your folder structure. It's easier for people then to jump between projects if they get involved on short notice. As I mentioned, create a hub site. Um, a nice thing I've also looked into is actually using Power BI reports. So you can use you can connect to Search API in SharePoint and create wonderful reports there. Also, something I've not looked into myself, but it looks very promising using Project Cortex to help you set metadata in a more automated way. So just some final thought, thoughts from my side. Implement quick wins. You don't have to do the full blown thing. As I said in the previous slide, pick some things that just helps make your life easier when it comes to document management. Accept also that users don't feel comfortable with each technology. I've also had really systems where people don't want to use Teams, where people don't want to use SharePoint. They're more happy to use the file system under quotation marks because you can then just use SharePoint, synchronize it down to your OneDrive, and then you can work on your file system and the user doesn't even notice it's working in SharePoint. Find the right way for the right users. There's no one fits all. It's just not going to happen. Also something you should consider when you talk about migration, do you really have to migrate everything or can you just archive something and leave it in the file system? Maybe that doesn't help if you want to have a unified search. Then at least try to configure a common search or structure information type architecture in such a way that you have an archive where you have a conscious search that looks into the archive or has it, have it as an additional option. Try to, again, reduce the burden for the users to find the right stuff because the less content you have, which is relevant for you, the easier it is to find your stuff. And of course, final thing, train your users on how to use the Office tools efficiently. Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Outlook, how do you integrate them with each other? Because I think a lot of the hurdles are often that people just don't know the functionality. It's not their fault. There are so many things there. But you, if you can give them a basic training on how to best use all of these tools, I think that can improve your document management experience as well a lot. Final thing, I finally managed to upload my code to GitHub. All the code I've provided, showed you in the slides here in the demo, are available there. Have a look at them. Again, they're not production ready. There should get, just be something to jog your brain and see where you can take it. Thank you very much. Um, if you just want to connect with me, ping me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, shoot and I'll try to answer them. Thank you very much. 